Final Fantasy 13 2. The story so far. Is. Is that you? I won't let you go! <laughs> it's too late. What's happening guys? Welcome back to Final Fantasy 13 2. We are in Augusta Tower 200 AF trying to prevent Hope's future death as it were or past death technically. I don't know how to define it. It's definitely past death. We're in the future. He's in the past but he's dead. So that's exactly what's going on more or less. Uh, the robots have taken over Augusta Tower and have destroyed everyone and later on become proto Seas, which more or less destroy humanity again, it looks like, judging by the scene we saw in Academia. But since last episode, I've done a little bit of grinding, as you may notice by the improved HP totals that we beat on these guys quite drastically. And what that means, more or less, is I've gone up a couple of Crystallium levels, and I've actually gained two new abilities, two very important abilities from the grinding I did. And that was... Meteor Strike and Ultima Arrow, two abilities for Sarah and Noel that are, are they're kind of special. They use up all your AT bars, you, AT bars, yes, that is correct. You can only use, I'll show you them in fact, seeming this Orion wants to fight us, it seems. It uses up all your ATB bar and you can only use it once per battle and they have two different effects to them. So let's first of all, um, okay, maybe not attack. We'll find it in the abilities list. The first is Meteor Javelin by Noel. Let's give it a go. Which is, as you can see, a large mass damage attack. Now, if I change to Sarah, we've got Ultimate Arrow. Which, as you can see, deals a lot of single target damage, as it were. So, uh, not, not single target. It deals a lot of scattered damage. It deals damage really fast. So it's, it's very much a Ravager ability. Let's put it that way. One is very much a Commander ability. One is a Ravager ability. So what I think it's for is Sarah's one is to drive up chain gauges quite drastically. Usually during stagger. And Noel's one actually has the effect of when you've used it, it clears the stagger bar. So the way to use it is to get a stagger going, use Ultima Arrow to drive up the stagger bar so you can do more damage faster on the staggered opponent. Then you, when the stagger bar is running out, use Noel's ability to clear it out, but do mass damage with the Meteor Javelin at that moment in time. So that's two new interesting abilities I picked up before we head down and see what's going on. Head to the 52nd floor, yes please. Of course we can head there in the future as well. Because of course we've got the key card that activates the same lift in the 300 AF version of this place. I was expecting to head down, strangely. This is great. The artificial intelligence that killed Hope and his team now seems hell-bent on killing us. So you don't think the proto C and the other AI are being controlled by Caius? No, I don't. Someone else is pulling the strings. Hey, life trigger. Noel doesn't think Caius is behind this mayhem. Then who is? It's not Caius because we know that he wasn't there. He's doing that odd teleport thing here that he did in Academia as well, so I don't think it's him at all. This is just like a murder mystery, sounds like a good answer, but I'm gonna say, of course, what about the AI? We already know it's vicious. Couldn't the culprit be the artificial intelligence itself? What if something that humans created found a mind of its own? So you're saying a machine learned to think for itself? Huh. Then it wouldn't need anyone at the controls, would it? We should search for the AI mainframe. Maybe we'll find out what's really going on. Koopa! I'm gonna do just that, but it looks like we've got some more exploring to do in this place before we find out any hijinks that have been going on. We're almost at the top floor. I bet that's where Caius is. Better get our hands on an access key then. We've got more keys to find. That's not exactly my favorite thing to do. Yeah, but you're gonna notice the extra strength. I didn't grind like completely ridiculous levels. 
But I have upped our strength considerably in the time that I had. Because I was rendering these videos and they take hours to render. And I thought in the meantime I may as well just play. It's always nice to have some extra strength. So when we face those monsters that seem to just randomly put us down. Maybe we'll actually be a match. Those random monsters that we appear and meet. By the way I think I've learned a little something about the red black holes we met. The best name for them ever that's for sure. And that is... Oh, there's another chest over there. We can actually walk over to it though, so we don't need to go anywhere. And that is that they might contain rare or powerful monsters. So I was right to run away. It was kind of obvious with the whole... Oh, monsters. The whole massive flashing animation that was prompted by it. Two Orions. I haven't fought two Orions before. These guys just really aren't stagger guys though, so it's very hard to just... Knock them down in nice fashion. Cerberus Cerberus always seems to work. But as you can see, I can randomly do some very high damage numbers now. Noel has got beefy. Drive that guy's stagger gauge up a little bit. That's the problem with going commando, commando, commando when you've got multiple targets. It's good on the uh, good on the normal Orion singles, but Orion doubles is not really going to help us kill him any faster. Which sucks. You can, of course, change that with the Paradigm settings and make them all attack one target, which is something I should probably do. Let's give it a go, eh? Paradigm pack. No, not Paradigm pack. As you can see, our, our Ravager, Alfred, is actually at the peak of his level and ability, which is kind of interesting. All right, let's tune it to a cross. Affect single targets. Yes. We'll use that one. A cross ability. So they should either all focus on everyone or stop using AoEs and use, ran, you know, just straight attacks. Which is probably better for dealing damage as a whole. Right, so uh, we need to switch to twist around these buildings. But I don't know where the switch for that one is. Dragoon A. Okay, they do damage. So as you can see, even though I've leveled up... It seems like I'm still technically under threat of dying. I mean, that, that was nearly a thousand HP of damage their burst did on us. You don't kill them fast, they're gonna whittle you down pretty fast themselves. Did Noel seriously... fire a rune bolt there? He's not even the magic guy. What's going on with that? So we need to find a way through there. We need to twist around this room to get out of here. But we need to find some way, or some access panel first to twist it round. It's too bad Mog can't do the work for us. Right, so I need to take the Dragoons out fast. The Orions aren't much of an issue anymore. We can take them out with our own sweet time, so that's no problem. Wait a second. Did I do the wrong paradigm with the cross ability set? I wanted the commando paradigm done, but I think I did it... Yes, I did it to... I did it to my diversity paradigm. That wasn't the cleverest thing I've ever done, is it? Two thousand eight six damage. I do love four-figure damage. It always makes me smile. We got a Dragoon as a creature. So let's check out what that is as well when we change the... Not the Crystallium. I guess we can find out from here. Dragoon is a commando. That's interesting. It's fuel efficient. Just in case you needed to know. Moderately recharges ATB gauge each time an enemy is attacked. So that might be what the fuel efficient thing is about. Right, let's go back to that. And we want that to be on normal because it attacks the same targets anyway. And that to be on cross. With Cerberus X. So it seems we can get across here. So that might be where we're supposed to be heading first off. Okay, we have the pillar for changing rounds. The perspective of things. Is there any treasure chests out wide? Ah. We don't really need to walk over to that treasure chest. Or switch the room round to go get it. When we can just throw our Moogle at it. So that's not a problem. Ow. 
Oh, I just did blitz miles away from them. I think I need to control his attacks on this one. And let him do normal attacks. It's definitely the best thing to do. Whoa, they're taking Sarah down. I think Sarah might go down, but no matter what, I'm killing the enemy, if you know what I mean. Oh, Sarah, you hang on there. Yeah, just before she die. These monsters aren't pushovers, though. They can actually do damage. Right, Mog. Giddy up. Oh, you should see my reaction. The first time I showed my girlfriend that you could chuck the Moogle. My god, did she give me the most disgusted look ever. It was so funny how upset she was that you can chuck the Moogle in this game. She, I turned around and said, hey Tash, 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 look at this, look at this. Chuck the Moogle and she was absolutely distraught. I was like, what? Kind of slightly understand it, I mean, you know, it's not exactly the nicest thing to do to a creature that's supposed to be your friend and ally, but... She's a bit sensitive after I got the Moogle toy for Valentine's Day, let's put it that way. And these double Orions take time. Might be good to replace my Chocobo now, because those other commandos we picked up are technically very strong creatures themselves. I've noticed that you can max level creatures, for example, Alfred is now max level. So the problem with that is, is that of course, they cannot go past their station, they cannot level up anymore, they can't level up alongside the characters. So no matter what, at this point in time, I do need to find a new Ravager to replace Alfred with. That's 100% certainty at this point in time. That's a double entrance way, isn't it? Let's go this way to cover the map. There we go. Only had to walk two centimeters to do it. They're literally appearing on top of us. Can't even dodge the fight and move along from them. Come on then, Dragoons. And a Flanator as well, just to make more problems, eh? Flanator has to die. That's a rule. That's quite a nasty combination they got there. I mean, the... The... The Dragoon is a commando, but it does damage damage rather than like other commandos. It seems like. Well, I mean, Noel does damage damage, but the other companion monsters in this game don't seem to do that much. It seems like, like their party was more like a Ravager commando. Or like a strong damage dealing commando, anyway. As a Ravager. Medic combo, which is quite potent, of course. I'm thinking of switching up my character's abilities somewhat later on. Because I don't think the way I'm running them is actually that optimal. Of course I need a sentinel. But I'm not sure if the abilities I'm getting with them are all that great, you could say. Cool. Man, they just literally appear on my face. Can't do anything about it. If I want 100% the map, or at least get as close to 100% as possible here, I literally have to go this way, turn this room around. Ah, uh, Blitz worked really well there. Especially when Sarah got in there with Thunder. By the way, uh, our lovely Ravager friend, Alfred, actually has Thundara now, so he has a slightly AoE attack damage ability, finally. Too bad I can't just walk up to the wall and it automatically discovers it. But I can't really be bothered to do that. I'll come back and do that on my own time, I think. There's no reason to switch it around several times. And, uh, yeah. I had the same kind of issue I was at before, I think. Oh, wait a second. I do have to switch around because that platform has the switch on it. So I do need to open up that switch. I'll just ignore the Flanitors and go for the Dragoons straight off. The Dragoons are the only one that are a remote risk to us. Do not recover him. Oh man. Sarah, get it. Look at the Flanitors healing each other with rescue. It's funny how you capture a monster and they lose their unique abilities like that. I mean, it makes sense because they're supposed to be your third party member. So if they're a medic, they've got to use medic abilities. 
for the, for the game to make sense, for the game to be balanced in a sense, but it'd be interesting if your Flanator that was on your party constantly went and rescued you all the time. That'd be ace. I hope when he casts Cure, he actually makes that noise. That'd be amazing. Wait, roll that to a full 180 or just 90 degrees? Just 90? How irritating, sir. Alright then, of course it does have the switch on it. I was about to say we'll dodge you guys, but there's no really way to escape you, especially with the Dragoon. It seems to boost forward. And hit you quite hard. Can't even see anything. The screen's just covered up by particle effects. Did I really go for the Orion first there? That was not the cleverest idea ever. I really should have paid attention to what I was targeting there. Right, we're actually going to have to uh, convalesce for a second. Which is a funny thing. No, obviously our Flanator doesn't make a noise. These guys do damage. I'm thankful I grind it up a little bit now. No matter how much you grind up though, a boss battle will still kill you. If you don't use the right ability at the right time, for example the sentinel abilities I had to use in previous battles. It's just something you have to do. So what way are we looking to switch that round to? Oh, that's obvious, actually. Never mind me. Obvious question is obvious. This is where I probably got it completely and utterly wrong. Man, I have to switch this round twice as well. I love how Sarah was trapped outside but suddenly warps in. Onto the desk, in fact. Sarah, don't run out there. Use your brain, Sarah. It's like a murder mystery in here. Come on. No, let me out! <laughs> the monsters, they just keep coming. It'd be funny, since Academia, we've literally been thrust into areas where it's monster battle upon monster battle. We don't get a break. Let's go! It's Chocobo! Oh, you do do a nice amount of damage, sir. Although the one who does the most damage on these guys is Sarah by a mile. When she casts Ruin, damage is done. Well, so before, I've seen bigger numbers by Sarah on those guys before. Maybe it's because the chain gauge was driven up a little bit first. Right then. Open door. I'm a bit dis disorientated after that fight. So we head round and down. Run away! I, I can actually flee this time! It's a battle I could have avoided for once. Amazing. We're reaching the room we needed to get to. And it is orientated the correct way, which is ace. Plus, there's a treasure chest out on the distance, which is interesting. Aha! I managed to get a preemptive strike on them for once. They kind of just spawn on my face most of the time after all. It's nice to actually, you know... Even though they did so much damage straight off the bat themselves. Haste as well. The battles go really nicely. Get in there, Chocobo. Let them let him dodge you. Too easy. Yeah, I might look into changing my monsters. I mean, it's nice having a Chocobo in the party and all. But I don't think it's the best I could have at the moment. Let's put it that way. See if I can hit from here. Yeah! What a shot, eh? That was directly on it. Okay, you obtained a vial of phoenix blood. Interesting. What's that for? Probably a material for items, but still. Right, we're here. I have to jump over it. We're here. <laughs> You obtain the top floor access key, so now it's all about heading back. I like how they just appear like that. 
Okay, Academy Datanet file. This information is accurate as of the year 200 AF. The highest floor of Augusta Tower is the site of a gate that behaves differently from a standard time portal. Instead, leading to a virtual space within the AI mainframe. To activate this special gate, one must climb to the top floor of the tower and directly access the AI's core. Okay. This is the last key. Next stop, the very top floor. Run! You will not catch- Oh. Why will the monsters never let me have a nice conversation with Sarah? We just don't want it to happen. We're just talking nicely. And they just start going off on one. I only need to charge up this much actually thinking about it. Look how much damage he does on those guys. Alfred, take a bow, sir. Right, so... Yeah, you might be. You might be right. Why would the Cirrus come here? I was about to say, I'm sure I heard a sound of a blooming treasure chest. Right, what are we getting this time? 2,000 gil? Fine. I'm a fairly rich man at the moment, let's put it that way. Lots of chests with, tri with lots of gil. Hopefully, uh, we find a Chocolina in here. So we did find one in 300 AF, wasn't it? No, it was in 200 AF, the bottom floor. If she sells us some nice new weaponry, it would be lush. Again, I'm attacking the wrong target. I need to pay attention. They're gonna kill, they're gonna kill him, but I don't care. Poor Alfred. But we didn't need Alfred there. I had the battle finished. I didn't want to waste time. It's all about just getting the enemy dead. Cha-ching indeed. Right, so uh, maybe that's not the quick way back thing to matter because I'd have to switch that twice and then come back there twice. And that would just annoy the hell out of me. So let's just walk. Ah, Flantor, you can't chase me. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, I have switch this one around, don't I? Hopefully monsters don't appear in this room, trapped inside with me. Because that would be, say, annoying. Let's explore up here until we've explored the entire pathway. So we've completely explored the top here, so we can work on the fragments from Academia. That lady who wants us to explore a lot of stuff. It's important we do. Look how much damage he does with Blitz, mind you. Knock you out fast enough. Four damage onto him. Go on, finish him off, Noel. Solid hit at the end there. Getting a lot of potent chips. Which were, Al which were Alfred's favourite food. Let's put it that way. Maybe I could use him to uh, level up a new commando or something. Then, of course, a commando you'd want... Actually, I guess potent is good for commandos. Because it... I mean, with Noel going pure strength, it would be it's nice to kind of have a balanced commando, I guess. One that can do ruin to a high amount and normal attack to a high amount. Can't imagine that's a bad thing. Get in there, Choco. <laughs> Love Choco just mashing on them. Still not down yet. Sarah does a lot of damage, though. There we go. We can finally take the lift. From the very top floor. I wonder how we get stuck in this tower, though. Will we get stuck here or not? That's what I'm wondering.
Why? Why my worst nightmare? Why? A Behemoth? A greater Behemoth as well. Oh, wait a second. You're weak. Well, maybe we're strong. Unless you get up on two legs and become even more powerful. Something I really did not want to happen. Ow. Might be good to use a special ability like Meteor Strike. Oh no, we're going to take him down. I guess we've got to the level where Behemoths aren't too much of an issue anymore. Tell me we caught it. Oh, I wanted it. I wanted it as a creature. Come on, give me a Behemoth. must be the heart of the system. I know it's a machine, but it seems like it's almost breathing. If what Alyssa was telling us is true, you and Caius should be up here as well. But are they with us or against us? That's the question. That is the question. Right, obvious treasure chest is obvious. Are there any hidden treasure chests around? Free potions. Let's look around for any kind of, like, tears in space-time, I would call them. Any kind of flickering background terrain. Nope, can't even hear any either. Chocopocalina, hello! So for my lucky customers today, you get a big dose of spirit and zest along with your purchase. Why, oh, thank you. Right, weapons. Of course, the first place to always go, and we can't get anything that's ridiculously good. But I'm pretty sure I really should actually switch to some of these weapons with abilities on them. Like ATP rate increases ATP gauge recharge rate is pretty nice. I mean, they might even look different. The different weapons might look different. They might look better. But apart from that, anything interesting? Lots of stuff there. Monster materials. What level highest can I buy to? Only two. Okay, we got specials. Sniper's eye. We're getting a lot of materials for stuff, it seems. Twist headband. Let's see. Increase the chance to interrupt enemy actions when attacking. A delicate one. Moderately reduces chance. Yeah. Reduces wound damage. Moderately reduces wound damage. Interesting items. But well, we're rich, so it's time to uh, stock up on some of those things that we kind of need to have and don't have that much of. It's good to be rich. Removes fog, removes imperil. Things we haven't actually faced yet and nothing that Sooner itself can't sort out. It's really quiet around here, so I've been talking to myself a lot, trying to keep things lively, you know. I'm sure you have, madame. But let's head up further on. Find out what's above us. If anything's above us. Ah, there's the gate. And there's you. You all. Are you on your own? Coco. I brought you this. Why? What should we do with it? You must protect the timeline. I saw you in Erba. I trust you. I believe in you. We're in the same time as when we met in Erba. So you're the same Yule? Yes. But who are you? Who are the Farseers? I am the Seeress of the oldest tribe on Pulse. My visions of the future are recorded and stored in the Oracle Drive. But that is long in the past. There is no more need to record the prophecies. I have Caius now. What do you mean? He is tasked with protecting the Cirrus and remembering her visions. Now and forever, he will remember the entire timeline. Caius. He is beyond death. What? You mean he can't die ever? The Cirrus possesses the eyes of Etro. And inside Caius beats the heart of Chaos. The goddess has gifted him the curse of eternity. He is a guardian, 
and his mission is to protect the Cirrus. The power to see the future is a terrible weapon. It can turn history into chaos. But then, I don't understand. Why are you helping us? I mean, you do know we're trying to change history, right? History has already been broken. The timeline had been twisted before I met you. The distortion leads to a future of death and destruction. If you change the future, you can change the past and correct the distortions. The miracle that saved Cocoon has already been altered. Someone who was meant to survive did not come home. Someone who was meant to survive? You mean my sister? You do, don't you? You're saying that lightning shouldn't have disappeared that day. It was because the future was changed. So, if we keep traveling through the gates and resolve all the paradoxes that are happening... Yeah. If you change the future again, the true past will be restored. The past that you still remember, Sarah. Together, the two of you can correct the timeline. Did you hear that, Noel? We've been doing the right thing all along. Yes. <laughs> can you tell us something else? Someone has been laying traps for us inside this tower. Do you know who's behind it? Your enemy. It is here inside the tower. It has generated the contradictions that threaten you. The machine is sentient. A machine? So the Caius who we met earlier in Academia, he was... An imitation created by the machine. And what about the other Caius? The one we saw in the oh, tower? He is real. He brought me here. And when we are finished, he will take me away. Hmm. Let's go. Yes, go. And please, let me see a new future. <laughs> we'll do it. Good. Everyone is smiling. This is the future. I wanted to see. this way. I'm worried about Yule. Kupu. Yeah, but if we're going to fight, we can't afford to have doubts. She's hoping for a better future and believes we can make it. Hmm. <gasps> Look! The fake Caius was sent out from this place! But where's the enemy that you warned us about? <laughs> the proto Falci. So this is what Yule meant by sentient machine. This thing has been behind everything! It's the one who turned the people into sea, and it's the one who's been trying to kill us in the tower. Okay, lots of story exposition there. Yours keep dropping dead left, right, and center. But we have an enemy right in front of us. It's that which we shall kill first before anything else. Taking out the arm should disable its abilities, as per Final Fantasy 13 rules. Get it down, and then attempt to buff us up a bit. Probably wouldn't be too bad of an idea. Oh, it came! That came up fast. Oh, 
Keep hitting Flam. Stop knocking me in the air, guys. I can't even do anything. I'm just being caked by that left manipulator. I thought it went down. I thought we killed it and it respawned and it didn't, actually. It was nothing like that. Let's convalesce a second. And then head straight back to battle. Let's go with the Tri Disaster. Knock up that stagger bar as much as possible, as fast as possible. Okay, now here's where the ability of a certain lady comes in. And let's give it a go. See how much the stagger bar goes up. Ready? Oh! In fact, I think I could just knock it out now. What? Wow, Osmer really helps. Stagger bar went up so fast, that battle was done in no time. Ridiculous. Understand. How did the future proto end up here? This place must be like the void beyond. A crossroads where the future and past intersect. And that would enable time travel. No, do you realize what this means? The proto could have used this place to travel through time and infiltrate the artificial intelligence. Then it could have manipulated the AI to kill all the humans in the tower and build the Falci of Academia's future. You're saying the proto took control of the AI and ordered it to build the proto -C. It's a closed loop. A chicken and egg paradox. Right. A paradox is exactly what it is. The proto was trying to protect the distortion that gave birth to it. And it knew all along that it was part of the paradox. <gasps> Just a sec. If the proto can manipulate the past, that means... It could travel back in time and rebuild itself. As long as the crossroads exist, you cannot defeat the proto Koopo! <sighs> right, that was a lot of science stuff. <laughs> Let's call it science stuff. Are you harder now? You've got kinetic booster, that seems different. Right, let's go straight to the arms again. Right, from all that talking, what I got there is that we cannot kill it because it will keep coming back and possibly build itself to be more powerful, which is, well, let's put it this way, really bad. So we need to find... I mean, in that, in that case, the only way to defeat it is to stop it being created. So how are we supposed to leave this room, go back in time from here, and stop it being created? Maybe we knock it down and uh, give ourselves a little bit of time to do something. Actually, just attack a second there, no. Planet door, get us up. Oh, wrong ability. I didn't want to use that one. I wanted to get a commando out, don't I? Actually, we just staggered him in two, no time at all. Time to change leader and do exactly what we did last time. Oh, I love that. Oh, wait a second. I'm the wrong guy. How do I change back? And now I need to change Paradigm and mess that completely up. He also got rid of his stagger bar, which was not good at all. I think the reason for that was actually the fact that Noel hadn't been attacking recently. So the commando bar just completely ran out in no time at all. But he's got his arms back, which is not good. I think we can go straight to the source and try to... Yeah, we're going to go straight to the source and lower his HP a fair bit. Then we're going to take out the arms and go straight back to proto Falci Adam. He seems to have got more powerful from rebuilding himself, so I guess that does make sense in its own way, if you know what I mean. Uh, I hope this isn't an attack I need to uh, hide from. He's debuffing our party, let's put it that way. He just imperiled everyone, that's really bad. 
take out one arm. Convalesce again. Ow. Plans, heal yourself. We're getting wounded a little bit as well. This battle is... Either I just completely messed it up at the start, or this battle is a lot harder. That first boss, even though I thought like we did really well. Oh, man. There's nothing like that at all in the end. Yeah, I know I'm a lifesaver. We need to kill that thing, get it out of our way. And head back to Procy Adam. Procy. That's an interesting shortening of the name. We really need to get Noel to attack on him for a fair bit to be able to uh, stagger him in the correct fashion. So the stagger bar doesn't just drop like a stone. And it's time for Cerberus X. Go, Chocobo! Antoinette, attack! And the health bar hits the ground. Time to finish him off. No way. Hey, what are we gonna do now? Mog. We gotta stop it. No. Now! Perfect! Okay, my turn! See how you like this! Time for you to go away! For good! <sighs> Thanks to Mog, huh? You saved yeah, the day. Thank you. You did great. <laughs> Battle over, it seems. My god, we went right at it. But doesn't that mean he could just rebuild again? We got five stars, so obviously the boss battle was meant to be harder. <sighs> that was a bit hectic. Crystal apple and a golden nugget. Hope's fault. Huh? He was the one who started building these things. Proto Falci and AI both. Ah, but will you listen to me? Looking around for scapegoats. These fights are really starting to wear me down. <laughs> I don't blame you. It's not going to do us any good whining about the mistakes of the past. If we don't stop this thing from regenerating, we're never going to get out of here. Life trigger. The Proto Falci keeps regenerating. What's the battle strategy? Okay. I think the last cutscene actually revealed what we're doing. Let's take all the facts into consideration that they've been saying. One fact was the fact that he keeps going back to the past and rebuilding himself. So we need to stop him at the source. We need to stop him being ever built. And then the mysterious thing that he blames Hope. Lure out the original, we can't do. Because what's the point in him coming out? He's an AI. He's more intelligent. Throw Mog ain't going to do nothing. Keep fighting until it disappears. Obviously, that's proven wrong. The machine is manipulating the past. But then, there's no reason we can't either. Please, I hope you're watching this. Huh? Hope! Can you hear me? I've got a bone to pick with you. These machines you built... Sarah! ...are driving me nuts! Huh? You did it, Sarah. But I didn't do anything. At least, I don't think I did.
Sarah, are you all right? Can you hear me? Oh, I'm alive. Oh, oh, what a relief. You worry too much, Noel. himself these days. I wonder if it's because he can't remember the future. It's understandable. No one wants to think they'll forget something that's important to them. Fragment discovered. proto falci Adam Fragment. And a lot of experience to boot. Are they going to have a nice little chat? Nope, no chatting? Well, I'm going to end the episode here, guys. It's been a long haul getting through Augusta Tower. We defeated the proto C by screaming at Hope in the past. Hopefully he was watching and it worked out fine. That was good decision making. <laughs> it was kind of obvious with the way the game was pointing and the game was like nudging, as I said. It was literally right. The answer was right in your hands. So, guys, I'm going to end it here. Thank you for watching this part of Final Fantasy XIII 2. Tune in next time to see where we're heading next. See you around.